Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Liyakat Zaman, ahla wa sahlan. Now many of you guys have uh, asked me if I can do a kind of series on uh, spirituality or maybe certain elements which a person wants to focus more on in their life rather than focusing on fiqh and these kind of issues. Um, things like patience, gratefulness, um, having the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembrance of Allah. Topics that we see time and time again in the Quran. So I thought I'd pilot it, see how it goes. And then if it's something which you guys think is going to be beneficial or you guys enjoy, then inshallah, maybe I can continue it. So just let me know inshallah. Um, and inshallah, I'll think about uh, whether I'm going to continue it or not. So the topic I'm going to be covering for today <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Yaqat Zaman. Ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome, guys, to my video. Welcome to my channel. If you're not familiar with my channel, I make videos free of charge for people, you know, who want to learn about the deen, learn about Arabic, learn about the Quran, learn about hadith, all sorts of things that people are interested in but can't find that information all in one place. So I thought I'd make these videos. It's absolutely free to access, inshallah ta'ala. And the aim is to have a, uh, a channel where there's all sorts of resources for people who want to learn the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the best level and best quality, which I'm trying to do, alhamdulillah. So anyway, so this series that I'm thinking about starting is a series on more of a spiritual sort of nature. I've made lots of videos on fiqh and other topics, and I know some of you guys are a bit fatigued. Yes, a new word I've come out with. So I thought what I'd do would be I'd make a topic on something which is more to do with the heart, topics that are related to patience, sabr, and shukr, thanks, gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, being someone who's humble or protecting ourselves from hasad, jealousy, and arrogance. Uh, and I'm going to try to use examples from the Quran and from the life of the Prophet Sallallahu So these are topics which many of you guys have actually asked me before and I did mention uh, about a week ago that I'd uh, look into it. So I'm going to give it a go. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to work. I don't exactly know how long I'm going to make those videos. I don't know how long you guys have or concentration, retention you guys have to be able to watch these. Whether should I, I should make them short so we'll see inshallah. This one inshallah I'm going to try to make it a little bit long, not too long. And then you guys can give me an idea of what you guys think of this. So let's start then. Right, so the topic of today which I've selected is the topic of sabr, patience. And patience is something which, you know, um, all of us seem to, in our lives, have experienced this in different shapes, in different forms, at different times or we wish that we had patience at certain times. The Quran, in fact, mentions about patience time and time again. This is something which we find, you know, throughout the lives of the people that are mentioned in the Quran, the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Maryam alayhi salam, and many others as well. So patience, how do we understand patience? Now, the way I like to explain patience is patience is like the reins that control the two horses that we have and those two horses imagine one horse is our desires and the other horse is our emotions and all of us have these two horses we're riding and these two horses are pulling our chariot our car and we're going and sometimes what happens is if we don't control these two horses the horses can take us to our own destruction and the destruction of the society around us as well. So controlling of the desires and controlling of our emotions, how is this something that is achieved? So the first thing that we have to understand is that when we talk about controlling the desires, desires are something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put inside of us. It's simply a desire is simply something you want. Anything you want is a desire. It could be good. You want, you know, to be able to provide for your family. You want to eat food. You want to be able to, you know, go to the beach. 
you want to be able to play some sports maybe you want to be able to um you know enjoy uh, a nice uh, uh, lecture like this or it can be bad as well so a person might want to desire something which is haram for them alcohol gambling they might want to desire you know having relations with someone that is not permissible they might want to desire hurting other people and the list goes on so this is the first thing that is very important for us to really understand the the dynamics or the sort of like blueprint of the desires if we as human beings understood our desires from a to z and we knew how they worked and we knew the consequences for following each of the desires at different times it becomes much more easier for us to know exactly how to tailor and make our journey like a bespoke um, experience so this is the first thing and desire is something which is needed in human beings as well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran time and time again reminds us about human beings that they want wealth and they want families and they want children and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually placed inside of us this desire in order for us to be able to become very competitive so this desire is something which motivates human beings I remember some time back there was a, um, a study that was done on mice and they were able to uh, isolate a certain type of um, gene inside of them or I can't remember what exactly it was that stopped the mice from actually wanting to eat food so they used to get hungry but they didn't want to eat food anymore and so eventually it, le it led to their destruction they died and this is something that can happen to us as well when a person loses desire a person has no desire anymore that person can go into a state of sadness depression a person can go into a state of total isolation uh, he doesn't want anything you know he doesn't want to communicate with anyone she doesn't want to see anyone and that itself will lead them to not wanting to go out and work not wanting to provide for their families not wanting to sit with their families not wanting to you know help any of their uh, their, their friends or whatever so unfortunately this is a state that can happen to people as well so the desire itself having a clean desire having a pure desire is actually something which is beneficial for us but at the same time desires come with consequences as well where a person will at some time in their life want and desire things that are not permissible for them so having this sabr and being able to focus this sabr and knowing what types of desire that we need to limit and what types of desires that we can give free reign to that is something also that's very important for us each one of us is very different every human being is different our circumstances are different the lifestyles that we live are different i mean my lifestyle that i live is very different from the lifestyle of many of you guys out there who are experiencing things which i possibly would never imagine the childhood that i had is a very different childhood uh than many or, or many of you guys have experienced yourselves and so when we live in a life and when we experience differences we always have to remember that there's not one medicine for everyone so when we tell people have patience have sabr the thing is that sometimes we don't teach people how that sabr is supposed to work like it's not simply just a matter of taking a spoon and just pouring the medicine and then you know spilling it or pouring it down your throat the idea is for a person themselves to learn how to have sabr as well. So the controlling of the desires itself is a very powerful tool that will help us in life achieve lots of things. Secondly is the second type of horse that we have. Second type of motivation that we have which is our emotions as well. And our emotions are also something which uh, help us as well. So the emotions the most powerful emotion that we have is the anger inside of us anger is a very powerful emotion anger is something which makes a person stand up for the rights of the weak anger is something that makes a person want to protect their family anger is something which makes a person want to you know save save their their wealth from being destroyed so anger is also something which is inside of us this is something which it kind of like like a fire inside of us and that fire inside of us sometimes burns um, burns very very hot and it, and it and it's burning away and sometimes it's like a small little candle just burning away 
This is also something that we need to have a balance in our lives in. So the fire that we have inside of us, it has to be stoked at certain times of the day. Sometimes when we see things that are happening and we should stand up, this is something that we should have inside of us. And this anger should be a pure anger. As opposed to the anger which brings uh, harms in our society. The anger which leads to death. The anger which leads to harming others. The anger which leads to saying things which we later regret. Subhanallah. One of the companions of the Prophet Wasallam. He came to the Messenger of Allah Wasallam, and he said, O Messenger of Allah, he said, give me some advice. And the Prophet Wasallam, he said to him, he said, control, he said, he said, control your tongue. He said, control, control your tongue. Yeah. And another companion came to him and he said, Oh Messenger, give me some advice. He said, Don't get angry. Don't get angry. Subhanallah, how the Prophet ﷺ, he would see different companions, whether they were male and whether they were female, and understand that this is the core main sort of like core problem that this individual is suffering from. He 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 identified the illness. Right? He was able to look into them, identify what the problem was, and then he gave them the prescription. He gave them the medicine, just like the doctor does. You go to the doctor, you know, you have whatever problem you have. You can't tell. You just feel the symptoms. You've got pain in your stomach, or you've got you know, a sore throat, or you've got you know, headaches, or you've got some other issue with you. The doctor easily can quickly ascertain what that problem is and then give you the right medicine to cure yourself. Sometimes what tends to happen is if the doctor is not a good doctor, the doctor might make a mistake. The doctor might tell you a particular medicine. You might take that medicine and it doesn't have the right effect on you. And he was supposed to give you another medicine. And this is sometimes what happens when we, when we go to other people and we ask them for advice and they give us the wrong advice. That they prescribe to us the wrong medicine. A medicine that worked for them, but that medicine might not work for you. Imagine there's a person, two people, and these two people have pains in their in their abdomen in their stomach and each one of them takes the same medicine and one of them gets better and the other one still has the pain and it's very likely that what happened was just because the pain is being felt in the stomach in the in the abdomen area it doesn't mean that the illness is the same it doesn't mean that the cause is the same one could have a problem in the stomach one could have a problem in the liver you know it could be different so when we ever we try to to resolve problems like anger or things like hastiness or things like uh, jealousy or anything else of that sort we always have to focus and remember on the root cause of what is causing our problem so if we have problems of anger anger is not just something that you can switch off yeah the method of sabr when it comes to the anger is for a person to be able to appreciate and understand that Allah has given them this power but then you have to understand that Allah has more power over you Allah has given you power. If a person does not understand that they are being held accountable for all their actions, it can easily lead to a person having this false you know, misconception that they are the ones that are in control. And the Prophet ﷺ on one occasion, he saw this Sahabi and his Sahabi was, 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 was beating his, his slave. And the Prophet ﷺ came behind him and he said to him, that Allah is more powerful than you. Allah has more power over you than you have over your slave. He said immediately he stopped and he freed the slave. Subhanallah, how when just, we just need to change our mentality slightly and anger problems can easily be uh, resolved. For some people, sometimes, like I said, the fire is burning very strong and it's been burning for a very long time. So there might be a treatment that might not work instantaneously. It might require you know, several days, it might require several weeks, it might require, you know, separating yourself from those things that encourage your anger, yeah, that, that stoke your anger, that make you, you know, like annoyed or angry. It might even be food. There might be certain types of food that you eat. And you don't even realize it, but that is causing your anger. Could be high blood pressure, it could be any other thing. Might have to see a doctor about this. So sabr is a very uh, intricate concept topic. Yeah, this is something which requires the expertise of people who are in the field of dealing with these human problems. So these are the two things that humans need to control when it comes to sabr. Very important for us to realize that if we don't control our desires and if we don't control our emotions, it can easily lead to problems in our society. So if we were to do like a simulation 
and we were to say, okay, in our society, let's everyone just follow their own desires, right? For 10 years. For 10 years, everyone follows their own desires. Everyone eats what they want. Everyone, uh, you know, has relations with whoever they want. Everyone drinks whatever they want. Everyone uses their wealth and earns their wealth in whatever way they want. What's going to happen to that society in 10 years' time? So you can imagine that there's going to be chaos. There's going to be people who are, you know, uh, abusing other people there's going to be this kind of like tribalism and that's exactly how what the situation was like in the time of the prophet sallallahu this kind of it was like desires had become rampant in society and people were just building their societies around you know desires and eventually it becomes animalistic so you can imagine humans will just become like animals who are just following their desires and you know trying to take other people's property and wealth and killing them and destroying them whenever they can. And then the same thing, try to do that with emotions as well. So if a person lets their emotions go wild, what's going to happen in society? People are not going to be trusting one another anymore. People are not going to be able to live in harmony anymore. People are going to be in a state of uh, uh, chaos as well, internal chaos. Right. So this is why you know in a society where emotions are running high, and there's no one to calm down the emotions. It's just going to always be a situation where people will be at loggerheads with each other. So sabr, patience. Like the word sabr comes from a certain type of plant, the aloe plant, which is very, very bitter. And it comes in a, a report as well that that the, that the you know, uh, uh, anger destroys, anger destroys your faith just as the aloe plant, it destroys honey. So when you place this very bitter plant inside of honey, even though honey is very sweet, it destroys it. And that's what, exactly what can happen when a person is not con in, in control of their, of their anger as well. Right? Like it could take time, but that's something that we have to work on. So it's getting a bit longer now. Yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So anyway, um, this is, I think, the, the, the first part of the video. I think I'll, I'll stop it there. And uh, I'll try to make... The other parts uh, of the video as well so let me know what you guys think of this should i continue this it's going to be more of a calm sort of a, a lesson so i'm analyzing trying to understand how sabr works examples looking in the quran as well looking into the lives of the prophet sallallahu and his companions to learn lessons and to understand exactly how we're supposed to be dealing with with our sabr issues Zakumullah khair. Thank you to all my patrons as well for supporting this channel. Any of you guys want to become patrons, support my channel, check out the description below. Zakumullah khair. And don't forget to leave any comments. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.